Okay, we're live. It's Hi, me Bob. and Greg. We are taking a walk around the hood. <laughs> and I uh, figured we'd answer your questions, so waiting for you guys to come in. Oh, the lights are strolling! <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, we figured, ask us your questions. If you have, like, fun science questions, if you have questions about us, let us know. We're Hi just... from Toronto! Oh, hey, Toronto. We see you. Okay, so um, questions that we got from Twitter. One of the main questions we got from Twitter was, whatever happened to the squirrel in your ceiling? Because... We used to vlog every week. We were really ambitious and thought we'd do that, then realized our lives were way too boring. But um, there was a squirrel stuck in our attic, and it was insane. It would wake us up all the time. But then we moved. So maybe that squirrel's still there. We ended up no, moving. No, or, no, they oh. fixed it. Well, Greg didn't deal with fixing it, obviously. <laughs> um, no, the squirrel got fixed because basically there was a hole from the outside into our house. And so the squirrel for the whole winter was living inside, and they couldn't come to fix it during the winter because it's too dangerous to go on the roof. So eventually, Actually, they came in Wait, the this summer. all happened? Yeah, of course you don't know what's happening. Oh. Um, <gasps> I've called the plumber. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Eventually someone came and fixed and patched a hole. Because they didn't want to lock it when there's like babies and stuff inside of it. So they had to wait till they all left and then put a hole in it. Anyway, that was a long story about a squirrel. <laughs> Another question that was asked was, what is my favorite song on the new SZA album? Because I went and saw SZA last night. And it's prom, and she actually didn't play it at the concert, and it was really sad. But the concert was amazing, and she's so amazing, but my favorite song she didn't play. But I'm a positive person, and I just thought, girl, I'll see you next time. <laughs> okay, what's next? Uh, okay, so thank you for sharing your knowledge. You're welcome. What else do you want to know? What's some cool science-y stuff we could talk about today? Like, what's going on in the news? We can give you them can a talk preview. About the, yeah, the video you just did. I just filmed the video, and since you guys are here on live, I figure I'll tell you. You get a sneak peek. Um... We're releasing a video. Well, we released, first of all, a video on ASAP Science today. So if you haven't watched that, it's called What If Everyone Lived Like Americans? Um, and it's basically taking a look at the world if people consumed as much as Americans, but also, like, pointing out the fact that people would have more sex because Americans are second highest in having sex. So weird After facts France, like that. After France, which is so France. funny. It's like, of course, French people have the most sex. That's <laughs> what I would have guessed, and they do. So you can go to ASAP Science to watch that video now. And potentially, we just finished filming and editing a video, I don't know if it'll go out today or tomorrow, um, about, you may have heard that, like, sperm count rates are dropping, like, crazy in the Western world, so, literally, sperm rates have dropped over 50% in Western men since 1973, possibly even more, because that study only looked until 2011, so, that's pretty crazy to think that if you've ever watched Handmaid's Tale or, what's the movie called again? Children of men. Children of men, that's the whole premise, is that people can't have babies anymore because either women are barren or men can't well, inseminate them. Well, it's like, in them. this case, it's men. Yeah, so, sure, so it's kind of scary because they're like, they don't know why. And part of what the hypothesis is, is that um, the environment, so pollution in our environment, we know that chemicals and like plastics and stuff actually affect our testosterone levels and impact um, sperm rates. And so the hypothesis is that pollution and the things that we're using in our lives might actually be impacting that. The question is, can it be reversed? So keep an eye out for that video tomorrow. That's Someone said be. America just got roasted. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't like. We didn't set out to make a video that was like anti-American. I think a lot of like the interesting thing is that America was the country that we use as the example because obviously it's like the most famous one. <laughs> but also America um, has consumes a lot of oil, but so does Canada. Canada consumes more oil than Americans. And so America is very, almost pretty much on par with most Western nations and that, like, Americans shouldn't feel that bad. And some things, that there, some things about being American are good. Yeah, like more sex, more porn. I mean, <laughs> America keeps the porn industry alive and, like, that's just something we all maybe at some times need to be appreciative of. Okay, about. okay. Um, somebody asked, what is the science improvement that we're looking forward to the most? Science improvement? Or, like, technology. Or what can science do? Like, they were just asking. Girl, get rid of these forehead zits. Oh. I gotta get rid of my acne. I thought you were gonna say, okay, okay. Come on, that's what I need. That's science. what you want science Figure to do. In it this out. World. I don't know what I want. I I want. I'm so excited when science has like teleportation, when we can literally not have to get in a car or a plane, and we can push a button and be the same person in the right order of atoms on the other side, not dying, and just. That is anywhere. so scary to get there. So many people are gonna have to lose limbs. Yeah, anyways. that's true. Or be like, are you technically the same person? if you're just a similar combination of atoms in a different space. Like, are you actually you? Uh, or would you actually be gone and it's like a new formation of you that has all the same memories, but it's not technically you? I kind of feel like climate change is going to like 
kill everyone before we ever get to that one. <laughs> well, we'll find out. But uh, in the meantime, we probably that's the, won't find that's out. That's the tech that I'm looking forward to. Um, okay. Someone asked when we're gonna get married. When are we gonna get married? Never. <laughs> Okay. Wait, did you want to get married? Oh, <laughs> wait, did you? I know. Wait, don't you make that so away. awkward. Hi. Um, no, I just thought we don't really think that. Hello from North Korea. That can't be true. I, mean, I guess it could be true. I don't really know. Um, is Greg farsighted or nearsighted? Oh my god! Do not give me that exam question right now because I know it's the opposite of what it is, but I can't see far. So I think that means I'm nearsighted. Yeah. <laughs> or it's something confusing like that. So I can't see far. I need these glasses in order to drive, in order to go to the theater, in order to see in the distance. Like, I can't read things in the distance. But then it's like taking it on and off gives me headaches, so I just leave them on. But I don't really need them that bad. And Mitch looks really good in them, look. How do I look? Should I wear glasses? We can be a poser. What? What? Like I don't know. Maybe my eyes are getting worse. I'm getting older. It'll be like worth it. Oh. But I also feel like. Question: Would you travel to the past or the future? Future. Why? Because I'm gay. I don't want to go in the past. (laughs) Are you kidding? Not. But would you want to like maybe do both? Like to see the past? Was that the question, Mitch? Okay, past or future? Okay, I would also go to the future. You're right. One of the saddest things I ever think about is how there's going to be so many, possibly going to be so many cool things. Scientists and astronauts are going to explore like other solar systems eventually, and but we're going to be dead. Um, so that makes me sad to think how many cool things might happen in the future that we just aren't going to experience. So I would choose to go to the future for that reason, so I could satiate my curiosity about the rest of the universe. What do you think is going to uh, happen in a hundred years? What do you think this park is going to look like? Um, it's probably going to be a condo. <laughs> A hundred years doesn't seem like enough to like have too much of an extreme change other than the city just being like so much bigger and like, I don't know, we'll still be on earth, but... Serbia respects you! I've been to Serbia. Oh, awesome. And it was really cool and people were really nice and someone even invited us into their home and it was like so, like a stranger. It was, it, it was fine. It was I really fun. This is not with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, I was there with my friend, but it was just like no other country I've been to where people were so nice to a tourist and they made me a really good dinner. So I love Serbia. I have a warm place in my heart for it. <laughs> someone said, guys, come to New York City and talk about the horrible MTA system. I literally see Everyone's anyone I know from New York. That. Did something happen recently? Like that the transit system or the subway system in New York got worse? Because I... Well, the MTA daily. is different. I don't really know what the MTA is. Subway. We don't know. We don't live there. But I just I have a couple people and a couple that I know from New York, and they literally all the time are just like mm, waited half an hour for a subway today or whatever. <laughs> like everything sucks. So the kid, well, it's the better Toronto than Toronto. Subway system is so bad. There's two lines and they're always delayed, and it's like that's why we just bike everywhere because there's no. Let's point just sit on there. the grass. We're in a park. We might as well sit. Is it wet? Are you gonna sit? Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. A Mexican biologist. Hello, it's nice to have you here. Are we vegan now, or has you have you always been? We actually no. are not. We, we did uh, a video that will be coming out where we tested our blood levels and we tested like our physical levels, and then went vegan for a certain amount of time just to see what the difference would be from our normal life to then. Um, and so we have some of the results, but we're still waiting for it to come together to get some of the blood tests and we, stuff done. I liked being vegan. I felt mm-hmm. really healthy. Like, even today, I just feel gross. I've eaten such weird stuff. It's good for the environment. I power to being vegan. I think I want to go vegan, like, once a month per year, at least. Yeah, I agree. Like, whether I eat less whether it's, like, it felt, it. there was times when I felt like I wasn't eating enough, only because I was maybe too lazy to coordinate a proper lunch, or I ran out of food, and then I, it's harder to just run to, like, a a restaurant or something like that to grab food. So sometimes I felt like I was yeah. being less like healthy. When it was really strict. Yeah. But yeah. But I overall, like be vegan. it was <laughs> definitely a good feeling to just like have some time to even just focus on what you're eating. You have to look at every single ingredient and not that I think some people over dramatize ingredients that they can't read, for example, or ingredients that they don't know what they are. That's not really the problem to me, but the good thing about it is that it forces you to just understand what you're eating. And even if you are eating things that some people deem unhealthy, at least it's your choice because now you're actually reading it. So Someone asked what would, advice would you give to aspiring scientists? And I think sometimes when I was in school, I was always so stressed because science is really hard. You have to memorize all these things, and at times it's so complex that you're like, why am I even doing this? But just remember that when you're learning about science you're so lucky to be learning about like the world and you're gaining an understanding of what's actually happening around you and a lot of people in other fields of study it's like more arbitrary it's like they don't actually get to learn such tactical information that affects them so always remember that as a scientist you're actually learning about the truth in the world around you and that is like 
the most important thing. I saw a question that was, what are we currently reading? Um, I'm reading a book called um, The Inconvenient Indian by a Canadian author. It's really an interesting look into what uh, indigenous people in both Canada and America have gone through and how they're perceived in modern culture. And it's also really funny. Greg recommended it to me and his dad lent me the book. Um, it's really good. So if you ever get a chance, what's the author's name again? Thomas King. Thomas King. Check it out. And what are you reading, Greg? Uh, I just finished 15 Dogs, which was so good. It's based in Toronto. It's literally based in parks around here. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, and I'm also currently reading The Gene. And what's that one that we started reading in the car? I'm still reading that too on Audible. What's it called? Whether it's like based in Toronto oh. as well, and it's like the flu the virus? happens. What yeah, Station Seven. Oh, okay. So, oh, Station Eleven. <laughs> so I'm reading Station Eleven and The Gene. Just finished Fifteen Dogs. You should read it. So, what do you you like both of them? Uh, I have to yeah. read. Yeah, Station Eleven is really cool because it's like it's sort of a sci-fi book. It's based in Toronto and around southern Ontario after a flu hits and wipes everyone out, or a lot of people out. And then The Gene, I don't know, you've probably heard about it, it's like one of the most famous science books, and it's about um, essentially genetics, like written from the beginning of <laughs> genetics up until now. It's really interesting, but right now it's not like World War II, and it's really depressing, and like science can be used for really bad things, and science is not just always good. Ooh, someone else is reading Station Eleven as well. Yeah. And also a bunch of people in Toronto are like, what park are you at? We're going to find you. Um, don't say. We I can't tell you. We don't want stalkers. Um, but we appreciate that you... Uh, yeah. Look at that dog! I feel like, honestly, oh. I don't know what this park is called. Um, it's not very big, don't worry about it. What would you like to see change in the world? More empathy, more compassion for each yeah, other. Yeah, it feels like... human, like... Let's just, like, friggin' uh, get along. Yeah, it feels like kind of a dark time right yeah. now in the world. And it'd be nice if people just took a step to remember that, like, everyone is human and everyone has issues, but we can all be a little bit more, like, empathetic to those issues and just try and help other people. But I guess nice thing. Things are so weird. Things yeah. so weird. But I mean, at least science can have a role in that because it's like its ultimate goal is to understand the world and hopefully use that to help people in this world. I guess it doesn't always get used for that, though. That's the hardest no, part. No, and it's so weird. It pisses me off that science has become like a political like issue. It's like, oh, you're left wing because you like science. It's like, what the heck? Like, I don't know when that happened, like when science was politicized. Although I actually did read theories about it happened like during the Cold War. But anyways, that's a little too intellectual. I don't know. It's just frustrating that like believing in like climate change believing climate change is real has now become something that like like certain people are going to be like I don't believe that because of my political beliefs like that's bullshit so that's just annoying that we have to deal with that but I don't know I think there's a lot of good in the world that like people need to like do a lot of self care right now listen to like I don't know music that's what I do <laughs> <laughs> um okay any, any more questions we're just chilling we're near the end of our day so pretty soon we're gonna wrap it up but Hello, everyone. You're from Algeria. Algeria, that's really yeah. cool. We've been to Morocco, close to Algeria. I've always wanted to go to Algeria. There's a lot of Algerian people in Canada. A lot of them hey, go to Quebec. Yeah. Someone said science is stupid. What do you well, have that, to say to that? They're just trolls. Yeah, you're, you're a troll, but here's what I'll say. You can't say science is stupid because everything in its own way is science. Like, it's science is just understanding. It's a process of which we understand the world. So that really just can't be stupid, unfortunately, for you. <laughs> yeah, it's actually really funny to say that science is stupid. That's kind of uh, really smart. <laughs> what time is it here? It's like 4.30, four something like 20. that? 20? I don't know, around 4. But, but on Thursdays, we leave a little bit early to go have some team fun. So. Yeah, we have beers with our team, and then like sometimes we're like, it's 4.30, hurry up, we have to go have fun! <laughs> okay. And then we go have fun. There are other people in this park, if you could not scream. They're all like kids, <laughs> they're fine. They do not. Yeah, but we're just like weird men sitting, we're sitting on a park. <laughs> like, so like, it's just like those people. I don't want to. If we I ever saw... People. So um, doing this, I would judge them so hard. I'd be like, those narcissistic freaks. But here we are, Lebanon. Cool. Cool. It's so cool how all these people on Instagram mm -hmm. can be all over the world. I read your book, Also Science is Everywhere. Agreed. Awesome. We we wrote that book so long ago now, it feels like another lifetime. But It honestly doesn't even feel like we did that. Mm -hmm. It feels like way longer than, what, three, two years ago? It feels like ten years ago. It was more than that. We started writing it like four years ago. Really? Yeah. And then it didn't come out till maybe two years yeah, ago. Yeah, it takes so long to write a book. Um, it takes a long time to write a book, guys. Note to self. <laughs> Why did you want to become a scientist? I think mine was based on a teacher. 
Yeah. Well, technically, School. we are not scientists because we're not True. actually studying anything. We we call ourselves like science communicators because we love science. We have science degrees, and Greg was a teacher, um, but we aren't in a lab like trying to research anything. We just love highlighting other people's amazing research because they put their whole lives towards um, understanding the world, and we think that's so awesome and just believe that it deserves more credit and believe it deserves more eyes on it. So that's kind of our goal is like how do we take awesome information that other people have devoted their lives to find out and then give it to you. Gay <laughs> potato land. What's I'd go that? there. There'd probably be a lot of french fries and gay dudes yeah. and gay women. So that's really uh, sweet. Can you do a video on British GCSEs? What's that, that's Greg? Like their, Greg lived in the UK. Yeah, I lived in the UK for a year. The GCSEs are like their examinations. They have a really different education system. Everyone has to do the same exam. And I think that the marks from that exam actually really matter. It's like high stress, high stress. So I get why you would want a video on it. But I think it would change. I don't know if the tests are always the same, so it might be hard for us to make a YouTube video about it. We can make a video right now that says, We wish you, we, we, <laughs> we wish you luck, my British friends. Your GCSEs will be over and you'll laugh about them in the future. But for now, study. Something I keep seeing a couple of people say is that they, they want to love science, but they're so bad at it or that it's so hard. And what I would say is that you don't have to be super good at your science classes or math class or physics class to appreciate learning about the world. That's kind of what we want to get across is because, yeah, so many people in like popular science, they are really, really smart and they've gone to school and then they have their master's and their PhD and they're in a lab or whatever. But so many people, so many of our friends, and so many of you just find life interesting. And I think in its own right, that makes you a scientist. So don't be discouraged if, like, you know, understanding a formula or understanding the chemical equation for something isn't up your alley. You can still appreciate the world and you can still just try to learn as best as you can um, and hopefully find other people online or in real life that are helping you to do that through new ways. There's a train behind us. Okay, what else? Any other questions? I love your amazing drawing and narrative skills. You're truly brilliant. Why inspiring. do you keep oh, asking so nice. us to say milk? Milk. 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 Is it because we're Canadian? All you have to do is say the word milk. Milk. I say milk. No. Do you? I say pillow. I just want a glass of milk. Milk. I want a glass of milk. <laughs> oh my god, that cow is producing milk. Oh my god, Greg's producing milk. <laughs> There, That's how it. he says it. There's like a really funny old video is by Is there a Julian natural Smith way to that, make your body more feminine and lower testosterone? Like with just nat like foods with and stuff? Hormones. Yeah, hormones. Um, I think they were asking with like specific foods and stuff. Well, we're into drag, know. right? It's like you can make your body more feminine with a corset. Yeah, true. But no, I'm sure I, we don't run, like have resources on that. I'm sure there could be some things that people suggest. ASAP Signs think. updates. You are so good at Instagram. We see you all the time. And they ask what your biggest fear is. Someone asked this earlier, are you afraid of death? And I think that's my biggest fear. That's oh. the one thing about believing in science. It's like it comes with the It doesn't vision. have to be. I don't think that's that scary. I mean, it obviously is scary, but just because you believe in science... Yeah. I guess if you don't believe in life after death is what you mean. Then yeah, it becomes yeah, yeah, like yeah. harder to accept it. But yeah. you could just have a positive view that it's like uh, those people are just delusional and they're wasting their time. Whereas if you if, – well, not wasting their time, but there's a chance that people are like, oh, well, I have another life to live after this. So I don't necessarily need to do anything extreme because there's something else there for me. Whereas I think if you don't necessarily know if that's true – uh, you'll be sure to make sure you enjoy your time here now and, and be happy Everyone while you're keeps here. saying milk, and then now I'm like, I just want to be always up in the know about what's cool with young people. And now I'm like, is it <laughs> milk? Like, are milk the new fidget spinner? Tell us, is milk said differently, or is it because we're Canadian that you're asking? Like, do we say it differently? I'm so confused. <laughs> I advice want to go advice not to procrastinate. Not Greg's Ooh. strongest suit. <laughs> Oh please! Excuse we, me, that yeah. is so unfair. You oh are really, such Greg? A we too. we had you um, literally don't. our sink broke. I think it was a month and a half ago, and it was his job to call the plumber and have it fixed. And uh, when did that get done, Greg? I have to call the plumber. <laughs> but also on top of that, I'm the one who, when it comes to work, I need to do stuff. I'm like, Mitch, do it, and you procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate. True. I'm better with a deadline though. Yes, I'm trying to give you deadlines, and then sometimes you don't even do that. Okay, anyway, what is your advice? Someone was asking, what's the advice for procrastination? How do you stop turn procrastinating? Turn off your phone, yeah. which is so hard. We're literally holding a phone right now. <laughs> but turn off your phone. But that, no, keep watching us, and then turn off your phone. But that's, like, honestly, probably the best advice. I, I, we have a video on procrastination that's pretty old. It's, like, three or four years old now. Some of the advice in that is to, like, dedicate really specific amounts of time. So maybe half an hour, 45 minutes of straight work. 
where you have no distractions. Mm. Like, so in bursts where you're like, I'm not going to load up my email and check it. I'm not going to load up Facebook. I'm not going to load up anything. Um, and really just focus that and then give yourself a reward after. Give yourself a break. Instead of just trying to do this like in limbo thing where you're working, but you've also got some social media and you've also got some videos on in the background. Um, yeah, just really focus your energy. I know that's hard. It's easier said than done. Um, but you just Someone have said, to do when it. is the next song coming out? We have Pause. I have one that. more. I, one more, I remember one more piece of advice is when you start something, it's so much harder not to finish yeah. it. It's like an yeah. intrinsic need in humans that you won't procrastinate as much if you just start it. It's the beginning stage that takes the most energy. That is so true. I feel like it is just like literally if you open a book and start writing, all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I'm working and I'm enjoying this. It's just the part right before opening that book that for some reason you're like, I know on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I can watch a YouTube video, but it's literally like, yeah, just start. That is actually the best. And that's Someone why. How was SZA last night? SZA was the best. Everyone, go listen to SZA's album. It's so good. I don't listen to that much music. I just listen. Oh, I think we lost internet for a second, but we're back. That's probably a sign that we should wrap it up soon. All I was gonna say is I just listen to stupid nerdy music and like soundtrack stuff, so no, I can work during it. No, you listen to RuPaul. Yeah, that was like recent because we recently got into RuPaul because it's the best show on the planet. That's not nerdy, it's cool. No, I know. That was different though. Anyway, um, we probably should wrap up. I don't even know if this is working anymore uh, because no one's commenting and I think the internet cut out. Bing. Oh, here, here, here. People are coming back now. Are we going to leave right now? Um, sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. But we Thank do this guys. lots. Yeah, sorry that the, the internet cut out there. It's not fast enough up here in Canada. We're still struggling. Um, but yeah, we do this, you know, a couple times a month or once a month or something like that. So save your questions. What we'll, see you, we'll see you next time. We enjoyed it. Go see watch our video. Soon. Yeah, go watch our new video and a new one should come out on our second channel either today or tomorrow. Peace, babes. Peace, Peace babes. Peace, 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 babes. Peace,